Oh my god! I just reached 200,000 subscribers and you know what this means. Party. Party, party. What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Anique. I'm a classical pianist and today it's time for another 1 minute, 10 minutes, 1 hour challenge! And again we will do another subscriber challenge <laughs> so first today it's my turn to you know embarrass myself again and after i did the challenge it's your time to practice and to send me your videos the challenge of today is going to be schumann's fantasy in c major this time i thought it might be helpful to share some tips and tricks how to manage specific difficulties in this piece and i'm going to share them while i'm practicing you don't have to do a one minute ten minutes one hour challenge you can also send me over your video after two weeks of practicing or maybe you are already practicing this piece just send me your version I'll be happy to receive all your videos and look through all of them and maybe I'll pick your video for an upcoming video where we'll do some reviews you have time to send me the video until November 27th to hotkeys.challenge at gmail.com and in the upcoming video we will pick the winner of the challenge who is going to win a 45 minutes online masterclass with me if you like this video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell and also if you want to support me and this channel please consider supporting me on patreon you'll find the link in the description box that I actually hate to sight read. I mean, I feel like I'm not really good at it and also I'm so much more used to play everything by heart. I don't know, how do you feel about sight reading? Tell me in the comments. Also, if you want to win the scores of today's challenge, write hashtag Schumann in the comments down below because as we're celebrating 200k subscribers here on this channel, Stretta Music wants to sponsor a little giveaway with the scores of today's challenge. And also, we created together a space on their website where you can find from now on all the scores of all the challenges. I'll put a link also in the description box. And by using this link, you're also supporting me and this channel. Okay, it's time to share a little bit what I was doing here and also to share some tips and tricks for you to, you know, get along with this piece maybe a little bit easier. So in the very beginning of this piece, we have a sforzato on this first note and afterwards a big jump. That's very special. So I thought for giving this first note a little bit more weight, I would use the third or even the first finger or both fingers together to create the sforzato naturally and then also have naturally a little bit time between these two notes. So the octave, oh no, this is not even an octave, this is more than an octave, <laughs> sorry. So to have a little bit time to do this jump and to emphasize this jump. So basically when you start to play, you take the third finger or both fingers together to get the weight out of your wrist. Like, uh, you basically push it to the outside and then you create a big circle to play the rest, so... And the less time you want to take between these two notes, the more you can just use the fifth finger for the bass note instead of the third finger or even the, the first finger. But actually, I, I like to use the first finger there. I think 
one trap that is here is using pedal too much. I would say that you can actually use quite a lot of pedal in this piece, however, not too much because you want to still hear all the little notes in your left hand. It feels a little bit like Opus 25 number no. 1 by Chopin, the Etude. So on the one hand you want to create like one big sound carpet underneath your main melody on the right hand, but simultaneously you still want to hear like all of these little notes that are happening. So I would suggest to first of all only use half pedal and and always, you know, lift it a little bit so you can still hear everything. And the other thing is to train your left hand with staccato. This will help you so much to articulate everything very, very clean and crisp, even if you're playing with a lot of pedal. <laughs> I was also practicing my left hand with a lot of staccato, so without any pedal, only staccato. By doing this you increase the finger action, your fingers are going to be much faster later and it's not going to glue together everything. So even when you're playing with quite a lot of pedal, it will help you to stay crisp and clean in the sound. Try to get a feeling for tempo and pulse. Try to really get through the whole piece with the same tempo. Even though there is written ritardando and you want to do some rubato here and there, there are going to be a lot of parts and details where you want to use this a lot. Try to still have the pulse in your head and in your hand. Because most of the time we tend to do too much rubato and too much ritardando that the whole piece basically falls apart. So I would always suggest when you start to learn a new piece, try to stay very stable in the tempo. Try to ignore ritardando at first. And afterwards, when you can feel the pulse much better, you can start to use more and more ritardando and rubato and all these little things to create timing. But never forget that you have to stay in the pulse. You don't have to play so many notes in your right hand and it seems at first that it's not very virtuous it still needs a lot of attention because you want to create like a singing voice and therefore we always need to guide the line through our arm and wrist so if you have like a longer note in your right hand try to really push it through the end so you can follow it and it's guiding you through the lines basically this will help you a lot to get the phrasing better and to you know just create a better singing sound at the piano You always want to make sure that you basically push through with your whole arm and your wrist until the end of the note, so... By doing this, you are going to help yourself to relax during all the notes that you are playing and this will help you to get the connection to the next note easily. Now 
Now, when it comes to these trills, I know that there are a lot of people who are scared of playing trills. Don't be scared. Every time you see a trill, basically the composer gives us a lot of freedom. It means we can choose ourselves how many notes we want to play, how fast we want to play. And if you don't want to play that fast or if you can't play that fast, just don't do it. <laughs> choose the right amount of notes that you want to play for these trills. You don't have to completely fill up the whole length of the trill with 1 million notes. <laughs> Reduce it, calculate how many notes can you actually play and how many do make sense to play here. Very often a trill that is slightly slower than what you think would sound nice is most of the time the better choice because it appears much faster to the audience because you have more control in the end. Okay, this was the challenge for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I could help you a little bit with all the little comments that I put there. I'm looking forward now to your videos. On a difficulty scale from one to 10, I would say this is a solid seven or eight in terms of technical difficulties. I think it's going to be a nice challenge for all of us. And I hope you're going to have just as much fun as I had today with this piece. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. We'll see us in the next videos. Bye. <laughs>